Greetings as friends. Welcome to the Hindu News Analysis by Shankar Ayes Academy for the date 10th of July 2022. These are the list of news articles we will be discussing today. Now let's get into the discussion. Look at this article. This article states that the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change sought feedback from experts and other stakeholders. The feedback is regarding the proposed amendments in the Environment Protection Act 1986. In this context, let us discuss about the proposed amendments and the important points mentioned in the article. Before getting into the discussion, I have displayed here the syllabus regarding this discussion. Just go through it. Now let us start our discussion. See, the Environment Ministry has proposed amendments in four key legislations. What are they? They are the Environment Protection Act 1986, the Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1974, the Air Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1981 and the Public Liability Insurance Act 1991. See these laws led to the setting up of the Central Pollution Control Board or the CPCB and it empowered the Central Pollution Control Board to take actions against individuals and corporate bodies who pollute air, water and land. Enacted under Article 253 of the Constitution, the Environment Protection Act 1986 came into force on November 19, 1986. The act establishes the framework for studying, planning and implementing long-term requirements for environmental safety. Also, it lays down a system of speedy and adequate response to situations that threaten the environment see the environment ministry seeks to decriminalize existing provisions of this environment protection act 1986 to remove the fear of imprisonment for simple violations the amendment act aims to replace the provision of imprisonment with simple fines but this does not apply to violations that cause grave injury or loss of life okay say for instance the current environment protection act 1986 provides that violators face imprisonment up to 5 years or a fine up to 1 lakh or both if the violations continue an additional fine of up to 5000 for every day may be levied there is also a provision for the jail term to be extended to 7 years okay but in the proposed changes the clause on the provision of a jail term for the first default is sought to be removed but the penalties were increased which may extend from 5 lakh to 5 crore okay so basically the jail term is removed and the penalty is increased okay the proposed changes also included the appointment of a adjudication officer he will decide on the penalty in case of environmental violations for example he will decide on the penalty for such cases such as reports not being submitted or information not provided when demanded that is instead of imprisonment the amendment proposes to impose more fines and the fines will be decided by the adjudication officer see what happens to the fines that the adjudication officer collects these fines and penalties are deposited in a separate fund called the environmental protection fund okay so these are the changes that is proposed to be made in the environmental protection act 1986 now let us see what will happen if the amendments are imposed whether it will give benefits or it will cause problems see according to this article the answer for this question is not clear yet because the environment ministry hasn't laid out a clear rationale on why these amendments were necessary in the first place but evidence suggests that in the long history of environmental jurisdiction in india the current law that is environmental protection act 1986 had very limited effectiveness and analysis by the center for science and environment found that indian courts took between 9 to 33 years to clear a backlog of cases for environmental violations from 2018 nearly 45000 cases were pending for trial more than 90% of the cases were pending for trial in 5 of the 7 environmental laws so the government feels that the proposed amendments were considered necessary okay see some of the supporters of this amendment also feel that the new amendments have made a certain category of crimes as 
civil crimes this is basically done to make the corporate organizations more accountable for instance if you want to curb pollution from a industrial unit in the present scenario we have to file a complaint with the court of the concerned district magistrate or we have to furnish evidence to the central pollution control board which would again have to approach the same judicial institution this would classify the crime as criminal complaints know that the category of criminal complaints have to follow a set of procedure and it was extremely time consuming and in most cases it was practically impossible to hold a specific individual or an organization responsible for a specific crime because of the burden of proof also note that in the history of india's environmental jurisdiction no top executive in india had gone to jail for a environmental crime that is why the new amendments have made certain category of crimes civil crimes so that it would be easier to hold the individual or an organization accountable in a easy and fast manner now let us see the criticisms of the proposed amendment the critics of the proposed amendment say that the existing clause of imprisonment was to deter violators and not to imprison them the proposed penalties according to the critics were also too meager the proposed amendments also opened up avenues for large scale corruption as the adjudication officer could be arbitrary in their decision making so these are some of the problems associated with the environmental protection act amendment that is proposed by the environmental ministry so in this note the environment ministry has invited suggestions and feedback from the stakeholders like citizens state government union territories and other concerned person the last day to give feedback is on july 21 that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw about the proposed amendment to the environment protection act 1986 we saw what are the advantages and the necessities that prompted the government to make the following amendments okay after that we saw the criticism against the proposed amendments in the environment protection act 1986 So that's all regarding this discussion. Now let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article. Look at this article. This science related article talks about the success of a novel technology in its pilot stage. It has been developed to help children with autism. The technology involves using a toy robot and artificial intelligence. So before seeing about this technology, let us see few facts about autism. Autism is also referred as autism spectrum disorder that is asd this disorder is related to brain mainly it constitutes a diverse group of conditions related to the development of the brain asds generally begin on or before the age of 3 and it can last throughout a person's life so certain characteristics are associated with it we may call it autism characteristics it is mainly characterized by some degree of difficulty with social interaction and communication it could also involve atypical patterns of activities and behavior for example they will have difficulty while transitioning from one activity to another or they will have difficulty in focusing on details they may also have unusual reactions to sensations they also have restricted interest repetitive and stereotypical pattern of behavior due to this the level of intellectual functioning among autistic people vary very widely so their abilities and needs also vary and it can also evolve over time but the issue is people with autism often have co-occurring conditions i have displayed the co-occurring conditions here they are epilepsy depression anxiety attention deficit hyperactivity disorder or adhd and challenging behavior like difficulty in sleeping and self injury overall the asd with these co-occurring conditions further affects the intellectual functioning of the autistic people so autism has an impact on education and employment opportunities of autistic individuals depending on the severity of impairment in intellectual functioning they may need different care and support so some people with autism can live independently some may have severe disability and require lifelong care and support so 
just because they have asd it doesn't mean they cannot do a job their intelligence sometimes may even surprise you you could have heard about a drama series called the good doctor it features a young artistic surgical resident in a hospital so yes people with autism lack social skills but not necessarily intelligence and also we may think asd is not that common but this perception is not correct according to who about 1 in 100 children have autism worldwide the problem in autism is even though autistic characters may be detected in early childhood but often it is not diagnosed until much later now let us see what causes autism many factors make a child more likely to have autism which includes environmental factors and genetic factors there is a misconception that childhood vaccine may increase the risk of autism see it is a misconception and this misconception is totally wrong according to who there is no evidence that childhood vaccination causes autism so how autism is treated see rather than saying it is a treatment we should call them as interventions because there is no cure for this disease or disorder several interventions from early childhood and across the lifespan can help as they optimize development health well-being and quality of life of autistic people particularly evidence based psychosocial intervention have some proven results psychosocial intervention means non pharmacological interventions that is it does not involve medicines and drugs rather it focuses on psychological and social factors so such psychosocial interventions can improve communication and social skills among autistic people but timely interventions are key here that is intervention in early childhood is necessary as they have better results so it is recommended to monitor the child development as a part of routine maternal and child health care we should not forget the care and support of family is of utmost importance in case of persons with asd along with this actions at community and societal level also plays a major role they can enable for greater accessibility and provide inclusivity and support this is where the local and national authorities become important factors in determining the quality of life of people with autism In India we have all these measures that are displayed here to help individuals with autism just go through it okay now coming back to the article the novel technology mentioned in the news article is important it has been developed by scientists from the Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore and Academy for severe handicaps and autism the technology involves using a toy robot the robot is called Cosmo it is a commercially available robot It has advanced facial recognition software and provides new ways to learn and play. The code of this robot is to set in such a way that it includes formal education goals then special need activities such as social communication or motor skills. For example, the autistic child and the robot would talk to each other and practice self introduction questions. This will improve the social and communication skills of the autistic patient. The crux is the robot is assisting in learning for children with autism. This technology is a breakthrough in the care and support provided to autistic children and individuals. So that's all regarding this discussion. Just a quick recap. In this discussion, we saw what is autism, what causes autism, and we also saw the symptoms associated with this disorder. We also saw what are the care that is necessary to treat patients with autism. I also displayed the efforts taken by the Indian government to address this disorder. Okay, that's all regarding this discussion. With this, let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article. Look at this article that is taken from the magazine page. This article talks about the great Mughal ruler Akbar. So, let us take this opportunity and learn some important facts about Akbar. See, the advent of Mughal rule in India brought in rich culture and ethical changes. Akbar's full name is Abu Ulfat Jalaluddin Muhammad Akbar. When we talk about the history of Akbar, it dates down to the 16th century AD. He ruled India from 1556 to 1605 AD. He was the son of Humayun who ruled over India for 26 years and Akbar was the grandson of Mughal ruler Babur. Okay? Now let us see about the initial years of Akbar. He was born to King Humayun and Behem Hamida Banu while they were in exile in the year 
1542 he was keenly interested in learning warfare techniques and was totally disinterested in reading or writing he was in fact not at all educated yet he had a keen interest in gaining knowledge about many things then at a very small age of just 13 years he was conferred the title shah in sa akbar this was under the keen guidance of bairam khan see bairam khan was the most faithful and capable military general bairam khan was initially a general in humayun's army and at humayun's death bairam khan helped akbar to put a end to hemu's rule see hemu was a hindu ruler it was in bairam khan's command that akbar's army defeated hemu in the second battle of panipat in 1556 AD okay so on the side note let us revise about the other two battles of panipat the first battle of panipat was fought in the year 1526 between ibrahim lodi and akbar's grandfather babur and the third battle of panipat was fought in the year 1761 between the maratha empire and the durani empire of afghanistan the maratha army was commanded by sadashiva rao bahu and the afghan army was commanded by ahmed shah durani now coming back now let us see about the mughal administration under akbar first let us see about the provincial administration see akbar divided his vast empire into 15 subahs or provinces in each suba there was a subedar a diwan a bakshi a sardar a quazi a kotwal a mir bakshi and a wakai navis the subedar our governor was the head of the provincial administration he enjoyed vast powers and was in control of the provincial army police judiciary and the executive the diwan was in charge of the provincial finances and all bills of payments were signed by the diwan the bakshi looked after the management of provincial army the sardar was in charge of the judiciary and the charity department the quasi was in charge of the judicial department of his province he supervised the work of quasis in the districts and towns the kotwal was the supreme administrator of all the thanas of the province and was responsible for the maintenance of law and order in all the cities the mir bakshi was in charge of customs and taxation department the wakka ai nivas was in charge of the secret service of the province so this is about the provincial administration setup under akbar's rule the provinces were further divided into sarkars and sarkars were further divided into praganas the head of the sarkar was fujdar who kept his own small force and maintained law and order in his area the fujdar was assisted by a number of other officials who collected the revenue maintained the accounts and deposited the money into the state treasury the head of the pragana was called shikdar whose function was the same as that of fujdar in a sarkar each pragana comprised several villages each village was under the charge of a mukadam a patwari and a chaukidar who carried on the work of administration with the help of the village panchayat now let us talk about the military administration under akbar's rule for efficient military administration he introduced a new system known as the mansabdari system the mansabdars had to maintain soldiers according to his grade or rank they were paid salaries in cash and the system of assignment of lands were discouraged so note this points mansabdars during akbar's rule was not allocated lands they were paid in cash okay now coming back see the mansabdars were directly under the charge of the emperor and they were promoted degraded or dismissed at the emperor's will mughal army consisted of infantry cavalry artillery elephants and navy the cavalry was the most important wing of the mughal army under akbar's rule some military organization of akbar also had some defects the defects include the mansabdars they cheated the government and the soldiers whom the mansabdars maintained were more loyal to them than to the emperors so these are some of the defects of the military organization under akbar's rule now coming to the land revenue administration see the land revenue was the chief source of income for the emperor so akbar paid special attention towards the organization of 
Land Revenue Administration. With the help of his Diwan or the Revenue Minister, Akbar introduced many reforms in his Revenue Department. First of all, the land was measured into bighas. Secondly, all the cultivated land was classified into four divisions. The Polaj, the Paruti, the Chachar and the Banjar. The Polaj land was always cultivated and was never allowed to fallow. The Paruti land was allowed to fallow for a year or two to recover its strength. The Chachar land was left to follow three or four years at a stretch and the Banjar land had to be left to follow for five years or more to gain its strength. Okay. Thirdly, the total produce of each land was determined separately. Fourthly, the share of the state was fixed at one third of the total produce. See, land revenue was paid in cash or in kind, but cash was the preferred payment. Having seen about the revenue administration under Akbar's rule, now, let us see about the judicial administration or judicial reforms under Akbar. See, before Akbar, almost all the cases were decided according to the Islamic law. But under his rule, Hindu law was administered in deciding the cases where the parties involved were Hindus. And Islamic law continued to function where the parties involved were Muslims. The king was the highest court of appeal. Capital punishment was given only in extreme cases and that too by the emperor alone. Then Akbar made certain social reforms also since he had the welfare of all his people in his mind. See, he had taken several measures to improve the general condition of his subjects. For example, in 1563, the pilgrim tax which was a great burden on the Hindus was abolished by Akbar. In 1564, Jazia, a tax which was imposed on all non-Muslim was also abolished by Akbar. See, Akbar tried to stop the practice of Sati also. He also discouraged child marriage and female infanticide. He also encouraged widow remarriage. Now, let us talk about religion under Akbar. See, Akbar was not an extreme Muslim. Rather, he is known for his tolerance towards our religion. He made many religious matrimonial alliances through which he sent a message of unity and togetherness. His marriage to the Rajput Prince Jodha says volumes about his kindness. Also, Akbar got the temple constructed for Jodha at her palace. This was done even though there was lot of opposition in the Akbar's administration also. Then, to strengthen his belief in the oneness of all, Akbar propounded the principle of Deen Ilahi. It is through this he spread the theory of all religion are same. Lastly, let us see the art and culture under Akbar's regime. See, besides being a dedicated ruler, Akbar was also a great patron for art and culture. He enjoyed the company of poets and singers and all type of artistic people. He was also a great lover of music and poetry. His darbar was a unique amalgamation of great artists, poets, scholars and singers who kept the emperor always happy. Also, Akbar's reign marked the beginning of the famous Mughal structural building activity. The first imposing building was erected in Agra. Then in 1570, Akbar established his new capital in Fatehpur Shikri. It saw many splendid buildings rising in a combination of Indian, Hindu and Persian Muslim architecture. But it was abandoned after 16 years due to lack of water. Akbar's forts and palaces in and around Delhi are great masterpieces of unmatched workmanship like the Fatehpur Shikri, Allahabad Fort and Agra Fort. Then in 1605, at the age of 63, Akbar suffered a very bad bout of dysentery. It could not be cured and this dysentery took Akbar's life. He was buried in a dignified way in the Grand Fort of Agra. Akbar's tomb is in Sikandra, north of Agra. He was succeeded by his son Jahangir. So finally, we can say that Akbar's reign significantly influenced the course of Indian history. During his rule, the Mughal Empire tripled in size and wealth. He created a powerful military system and instituted effective political and social reforms. Okay, that's all regarding this discussion. Before concluding, let us do a quick recap. See, in this discussion, we saw the initial years of Akbar's rule. We saw about his birth, his father and mother. We also saw about 
the three battles of panipat then we saw about the provincial organization under akbar's rule then we saw about the military organization and the revenue collection mechanism finally we saw about the development of art and culture during akbar's regime okay that's all regarding this discussion with this let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article let us take this new snippet for our next discussion this new snippet talks about mu on magnetism before seeing about the news here let us have a basic understanding about mu on the mu on is one of the fundamental subatomic particles it is one of the most basic building blocks of the universe as described in the standard model of particle physics on a side note let us see little bit about the standard model of particle physics the standard model is a theory that predicts the behavior of the building blocks of the universe it lays down the rules for six types of quarks six leptons the higgs boson the three fundamental forces and how the subatomic particles behave under the influence of electromagnetic forces see the four fundamental forces in the universe include gravity weak nuclear strong nuclear and the electromagnetic force of the four forces the three forces that are explained by the standard model include the weak nuclear force the strong nuclear force and the electromagnetic force no coming back to the muons see muons are similar to electrons but they weigh more than 207 times as a electron okay so the muons are often referred to as a fat electron the muon is a part of the lepton group what are leptons leptons are a type of fundamental particles meaning they are not made up of even smaller particles of matter for example protons and neutrons are not leptons because protons and neutrons are made up of a smaller fundamental particle called the quarks a neutron is made up of one up quark and two down quark similarly a proton is made up of two up quark and one down quark but in case of leptons they cannot be subdivided further there are six types of leptons they are electron electron neutrino muon muon neutrino tau and tau neutrino here electron muon and tau are negatively charged electron neutrino muon neutrino and tau neutrino are neutrally charged an additional point to know here is that the muons and the other leptons are affected only by the three of the four fundamental forces that is the leptons and the muons are affected only by the strong nuclear force weak nuclear force electromagnetic force okay they are not affected by the gravitational force now let us see the major source of muons muons are formed when the cosmic ray from the sun having high energy protons collide with earth's upper atmosphere another thing to note is that muons are relatively unstable and have a life span of only 2.2 microseconds once muons are formed due to the cosmic ray interaction within 2.2 microseconds it decays into an electron and two neutrinos also know that these muons travel at speeds close to the speed of light due to this property within the 2.2 microseconds when they are alive they can travel a long distance so with this i guess you have a basic understanding about the muons now let us come to the news article what does the article say the article says that an experiment that was conducted showed that the muon magnetism was way higher than the muon magnetism that was predicted according to the standard model of particle physics but recently the calculation made by the standard model of particle physics were reviewed and now the magnetism observed in the experiment and the magnetism predicted by the standard model of particle physics are very close and they are not far from prediction okay that's all about this discussion in this discussion we saw about the basics of muon see muon is similar to electron but they are little heavier okay so they are called fat electron they are negatively charged and they move at speeds close to the speed of light okay they decay very soon 
and they are part of the lepton group they are affected only by three of the four fundamental forces of nature that is they are affected by strong nuclear force weak nuclear force electromagnetic force okay and they are not affected by gravitational force i hope this discussion was helpful now let us conclude this and take up the next news article look at this news snippet it says that the polio virus made a rare appearance in london last month due to this the uk health officials are urging people of london to get vaccinated against polio virus okay this is about the news article in this context let us revise about polio see polio mellitus or polio is a highly infectious disease caused by a virus belonging to the picorona viridae family it is a disabling and life threatening disease caused by the polio virus this polio virus is a rna virus some other examples of human disease causing rna virus include hepatitis c virus ebola virus sars influenza human immunodeficiency virus and finally the corona virus also now coming back polio is highly infectious disease the virus is transmitted from person to person mainly through the fecal oral route this mainly happens due to contaminated food and water when it comes to polio virus humans are the only known reservoir the crucial thing here is that there is no cure for polio but the saving grace is that it can be totally prevented by proper immunization as far as vaccination is concerned there are two kinds of vaccines available the first one is an inactivated or killed polio vaccine it is an injectable vaccine the next one is a live attenuated or weakened oral polio vaccine it is an oral vaccine see in india as of 2014 our country has been declared polio free see earlier in india we have been administering oral polio vaccine through the pulse polio program after 2014 as a mitigation strategy we have shifted to the inactivated polio vaccine which is an injectable vaccine this inactivated polio vaccine is provided as a part of mission indradhanush right now that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw what is polio we saw the causative agents for polio we also saw the types of vaccination that is available for polio we also saw some of the examples of disease causing rna viruses with this let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article look at this news article this article gives us two very good data which can be used in our mains answer the first one is that the transport of food accounts for nearly 1/5 of the carbon emissions in the food system the next is that in 2017 the domestic and international movement of food added emissions equivalent to 3 gigatons of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere and in this wealthy nations were responsible for generating nearly half of all the emissions why i am mentioning about this data is that number 1 this data is easy to remember and number 2 it can be used in a variety of questions in the mains examination what makes the topper get one or two additional marks per question is they substantiate their opinion with data the data that we saw now can be used to answer questions relating to food sector transportation sector and if you are really innovative you can also incorporate this data in questions to highlight the need for renewables so substantiating your answer with data is very important in the mains answer writing process for this now let us take this question for example this question appeared in the 2019 gs paper 3 in this question they are asking us to write about the reformative steps that can be taken to make the food grain distribution system more effective See for this question we can use the data that we recently saw in the introduction part see while other aspirants in the introduction will plainly write that food grain distribution in india is ineffective and therefore it needs some reformative steps from the government so to differentiate your answer in the introduction if you substantiate the same statement with the data that we recently saw your answer will become more legit so like this try to incorporate the data that we see daily in your mains answers also 
maintain a separate notebook for data and revise it regularly so that it gets attached to your long term memory so data in your main sensor is very important okay with this let us conclude this and take up the next news article have a look at this news article this news article talks about the red pandas see the shangrila national park the highest protected area in west bengal will soon get new inhabitants that is this national park is soon to receive some red pandas this is part of the red panda argumentation program this red panda argumentation program is to argument the wild red panda population this is because the number of red pandas has been declining in the wild this decline is very severe in the shangrila and the niora valley national parks these are the two protected areas where the mammal is found in the wild in west bengal this is the crux of the article given here in this context let us learn about red panda in detail see the red panda is slightly larger than a domestic cat with bear like body and a thick russet fur they are very skillful and acrobatic animals that predominantly stay in trees they use their long bushy tails for balance and to cover themselves in winter mainly for warmth primarily the red panda is an herbivore they rarely eat meat the name panda is said to have come from the nepali word ponya which means bamboo or plant eating animal see the red panda has less similarity with the giant panda instead they are closely associated with their north american cousins the raccoons which are also called trash panda note that more than 50% of red panda's habitat is in the eastern himalayan region just look at this map here to know more about its habitat the red pandas live in the rainy mountain forest of nepal india bhutan northern myanmar and central china they spend the vast majority of their lives in trees where they sleep and sunbathe according to chinese researchers there are two species of red panda they are the chinese red panda and the himalayan red panda previously these two species were considered to be same but with some variations but genetic evidence show that they are completely different species rather than variations of one species as you can see in this picture chinese red pandas have redder fur while himalayan pandas have whiter face according to researchers the himalayan red panda needs more protection because of its lower genetic diversity and smaller population size now let us see the conservation status for red panda the red panda is characterized as endangered under the iucn red list and they are listed under schedule 1 of the wildlife protection act 1972 of india now let us see the reasons for their population decline the main reason for their decline in population is the loss of nesting trees and bamboos the other reason include firstly the red pandas are often killed when they are caught in traps meant for other animals such as wild pigs and deer secondly they are poached for their distinctive pelt in china and myanmar see red panda fur caps or hats have been found for sale in bhutan even so a community based conservation and protection for the species is necessary this is because the habitat of red panda stretches across remote areas okay that's all regarding this discussion now let us do a quick recap see in this discussion we saw about the red panda augmentation program then we saw about the red panda and its basics its habitats its food habits and its conservation status okay then we saw about the difference between the himalayan red panda and the chinese red panda and we also saw the issues that is leading to the decline in the red panda numbers in the wild okay that's all regarding this discussion with this discussion let us conclude the news article analysis session and take up the practice prelims questions we have two practice prelims questions today let us see them one by one let us take up the first question this question is based on our autism discussion three statements are given we have to find the correct statement let us take up the first statement autism spectrum disorder is diagnosed through a blood test see this statement is incorrect autism has no medical test like blood test this is why autism spectrum disorder diagnosis is difficult so by eliminating statement 1 you can easily arrive at the correct answer so the correct answer here is option c 2 and 3 only so for our revision purpose we will see statement 2 and statement 3 also let us take up statement 2 asperger syndrome is a 
type of autism spectrum disorder see this statement is correct we saw in our discussion that autism spectrum disorder constitute a diverse group of conditions relating to development of the brain it includes autistic disorder which is also called classic autism this is more general form of autism it involves significant language interruptions social and communication challenges and unusual behaviors and interest many people with this disorder may also have intellectual disability another one is asperger syndrome people with asperger syndrome have mild symptoms of autistic disorder they might have social challenges and unusual behaviors and interest however they typically do not have problem with language or intellectual disability moving on to statement 3 people with autism spectrum disorder have abnormal levels of serotonin in the brain see this statement is also correct studies have found irregularities in several regions of the brain in people with autism spectrum disorder on these lines abnormal levels of serotonin or other neurotransmitters in the brain have also been found in people with autism spectrum disorder so once again the correct answer here is option c 2 1 3 only moving on to the second question see this is a pair based question here the states are given and here the national parks are given we have to find which of the three pairs are correct let us take up the first pair assam and dibru saikova see this is a correct pair dibru saikova national park is one of the few remaining protected sites in the endemic bird area of assamese plains see it is a river island national park and one of the 19 biodiversity hotspots in the world this national park is situated 12 km north of tinsukia in assam This national park is mainly covered by grasslands and dense forest. The main fauna found in this national park include the Royal Bengal Tiger, Hilla Gibbons and leopards. See, since it is a riverine island national park, there is no roads or jungle safari in this national park. So, only through trekking this national park can be accessed. Okay? Moving on to the second pair, Tripura and Rajbari. See, this is also correct. Rajbari National Park is situated in the Trishna Wildlife Sanctuary which is located in Tripura. This park is spread over 32 km square area. One can expect to come across various wildlife including the world famous Indian gaur, deer, golden langurs, pheasants and many species. The bison reserve this national park has a bison reserve mainly to protect the endangered species. Okay? moving on to the third pair west bengal and neora valley see this is also correct the neora valley national park is located in west bengal and it is a compact patch of virgin forest rich in biodiversity it is located in the eastern himalayas region and it is a global biodiversity hotspot it was notified as a national park based on the provisions of wildlife protection act 1972 in the year 1992 okay the common species found here include red panda himalayan thar Himalayan black bear, sambar, barking deer, dhol, tiger, clouded leopard and Malayan giant squirrel. This national park also has various species of rhododendrons. Okay? So, here all the three pairs are correct. So, the correct answer here is option 3, all three pairs. The main question based on today's discussion is displayed here. See, look at this question. What are the proposed amendments in the Environment Protection Act 1986? Do you think this proposed amendment will address the lacuna in the existing law? See, this is a opinion based question. So, what they are asking is, they are asking us to write about the amendments that is proposed in the Environment Protection Act and they are asking our opinion. See, both these aspects we saw in our discussion. We saw the proposed amendments and we saw about the positives and negatives of the amendments. The question is just demanding that. So, what I suggest is, go ahead. and listen once again the discussion and write the answer from your memory it will be helpful okay moving on to the second question discuss the administrative reforms and social reforms made by the great mughal emperor akbar see this is a slight tricky question because it has the keyword discuss in it see in our discussion i just listed out the administrative reforms and social reforms made by akbar but here they are asking us to discuss these reforms so when there is a keyword discuss in the question you have to write both the positives and the negatives and finally conclude by giving your opinion so in case of administrative reforms refer to our discussion and write the reforms and also write the positives of the reforms and the 
negatives or the defects in the reforms this applies to the social reforms also and finally give a balancing conclusion this is what this question demands so in this framework just review our discussion once again and write your answers okay with this we have come to the end of the discussion if you liked today's discussion like comment and share it with your friends for more updates regarding upsc preparation subscribe to our youtube channel now thank you for listening